So yes. So Enolia holds a BS in mathematics from the University of Massachusetts in Amherst and an MBA from Regis University, where she graduated in the top one percent of her class, joining the Alpha Sigma and Mu Honor Society. Her twenty plus years of navigating the dynamics of the corporate world fortified her with leadership development. coaching and various certifications she is the founder of inolia llc delivering transformative empowerment and self development programs to conscious professionals and businesses worldwide she is also ceo of expressions of humanity foundation which provides emergency humanitarian aid promotes global activism and provides life skill training to undis- underserved communities she leverages education as well as media and technology to build a global exchange of accessible knowledge culture and essentials she is an award winning international speaker global influencer social entrepreneur life or business coach author green champion and a global ambassador for peace a natural orator she is a harmonizes corporate experience with a broad knowledge base that includes many traditions from around the world so inolia so it's your turn it's your turn to present so occupy the stage have a great day Thank you so much Melinda. I am so grateful and thank you to everyone. It is so wonderful to be here for the WIN because WIN because it feels like home. Being originally from Queens, New York and born and raised as a New Yorker, I feel like home is the best place to be. So today we're going to talk about empower, achieve, succeed. how to basically come into your own self mastery and why self mastery when we look at life life is nothing but a series of processes procedures and pathways by which we want to lead and of course while we are in life we want the best for ourselves but sometimes we're just not focused on how to achieve that best to move forward for ourselves why is it important to have self mastery why is it important to be able to self reflect when we take the time to self reflect when we take the time and own our own self mastery what happens is that life falls into flow It is a flow that goes right to your vision, right to exactly where you want to be. And it's not that there aren't challenges, but what happens is that we are so aligned with our visions and our goals and our relationships and our situations that we deal with that life seems to flow within grace and ease. So let me explain further. What does it mean to empower? To empower means that I can look at my strengths within my courageous parts of myself and bring them forward by choice consciously. A lot of times when we are moving through life, we move through life unconsciously. That means we're quick to make decisions without giving them a second thought. We just make them fly on the spot. It's almost akin to like walking barefoot. With the rubber on our shoes, we don't have to be conscious of every step that we take. We just move forward. We charge. We're in a rush. We have to get to where we're going. And we get to where we're going without a second thought. Well, what happens if you remove those shoes? What happens when every step that you take has to be a conscious choice and it's a conscious choice when your shoes are removed right 
because you don't want to step on glass. You're conscious of the surface that you're walking on. You're conscious of what could be within that search, that surface when you're walking. So when I say that it's a conscious choice or more conscious when those shoes are off, it's because you are thinking before you step every step of the way as you are walking. So let's take a look at that akin to life. Are you conscious about each choice that you make within life? Are you conscious where you're stepping in the direction that your life is headed in? Does it flow? So if we step back and we look at understanding how to consciously make that choice such that our most courageous and our most empowered self is forward, there are tools that we have to use or there are tools that we can use to master those things. And they're not tools outside of ourselves. They're tools that we already possess. We already possess understanding that when we mastered them, our life flows better. So let's talk about some of those tools and what they look like. The first tool that you should be conscious of is to notice. And you might say, come on, notice, notice. Noticing allows you to take stock of what's taking place within you. Noticing allows you to understand exactly where you are stepping, how you are stepping, how you are formulating those decisions, why you are formulating those decisions the way that you are. So, what is it that we need to notice? Well, first of all, if you were to step back and look at a time when you are most happiest and most confident and feel those attributes and clearly understand those attributes, just think of a moment right now. And then take a time when you were feeling mm, not so sure of yourself a little bit insecure, don't know if you should trust that, overanalyze it. You have these two paths. How are you making those decisions? Notice. Are you choosing your most courageous self when it comes to the most powerful and key individual decisions that you need to make? Or are you making those decisions from a place of insecurity and fear? What aspect of your personality leads you through your day? Is it the one that is most courageous? Is it the one that's most confident? Is it the one that has that certainty of the decisions that you make? Or is it that one that you basically are second guessing yourself? not sure of yourself, motivated to kind of bully your way through, but a little bit blind as you're doing it. Notice. Because when you clearly understand how you are making decisions and you clearly understand what aspect of you is leading you through your life and you want to change it, then you understand what you need to face. It's almost akin to looking in the mirror and understanding clearly what you see. So we have this tool of noticing and we notice what aspect is leading us. And let's just say hypothetically that as we are going through life, I notice that I don't really trust my decisions all the time. I kind of overanalyze, feel a little bit insecure, but I kind of, you know, take the leap take the plunge, jump, hope that it's the right direction and keep going. How is that serving me? Is that the aspect of my personality that should be leading me? Is it serving me? So if you step back and you look at it and clearly I don't want my more insecure part leading my life. I consciously, I consciously 
want to choose the most courageous and confident self that gives me those attributes. Notice. So if your life isn't going the way you want it to, and your life isn't, your life's path isn't taking you where you want to be, or whenever you desire to go outside of your comfort zone and you just find that you can't, notice what aspect is leading you. Because it is not your most courageous self. So that's one of the tools. Let's talk about another one. Let's talk about the power of our voice. And you would say, okay, the power of voice. I speak all the time. I know exactly what I'm saying. You know, I'm confident in what I'm saying. But the power of our voice is so much more. As I speak to you, there is a vibration that is taking place. There is a vibration and a frequency that's placing, taking place. And as I speak to you, what is it that you notice as you receive that information? Does it make you comfortable? Is there something that just hits home really deep down and says, oh, okay, that resonates with me. That's something that that's palatable that I could take, digest, and, and, and work with. What is the comfort level as you receive that information? How is that information delivered? Is it delivered in the positive way in which I can act on? All of these aspects, all of these things make a difference as to how we engage and establish our relationships, how we present ourselves, the environments that we set up, to hold, to engage others? How do you express yourself? Is that confidence level there? Is that power behind the voice of your knowing, of your knowing that you deserve to be there, of your knowing that you come with the wisdom that is needed to make the statements that you are? And we're not talking about an authoritative or egotistical knowing. We're talking about a courageous and a confident knowing. A knowing that assures me that as I speak to you, I am very clear on my message. I am very confident about what it is that I am trying to share with you. And as you receive that, that you feel the passion within, coming from me to you, to grasp the message that I'm trying to share. The power of our voice makes a difference. And not just that, but the power of our thoughts, whether they're positive or negative, also makes the difference. How do you approach what you are about to do? Are you a glass half empty or are you a glass half full person? Are you approaching it confidently? And the beauty about the power of our voice is that that is a tool that you already possess to understand the depth and the knowingness that when you deliver something and you deliver it with a passion, and the clarity and the motivation behind it, that it makes an impact. It is the true representation of who you are. And it is important to master it. And then let's talk about another tool. Let's talk about judgment. Judgment is something that takes place every single day that we engage in life. We get judged, we judge. People pass on our, their perceptions to us. And what happens when it comes to judgment is that it's not the fact that the judgment takes place, and now I'm going to talk about it in terms of receiving judgment. 
but it's the fact that when judgment takes place, how do we react to judgment? Do we give our power away? Do we take somebody's judgment or perception, adapt it as our own, whether it is meaningful or not, whether it's even our truth or not, and adapt it as our truth, thereby reacting to it immediately? And not only in that moment have we given our power away, but we have gotten sidetracked because now our emotional body is forward and in the forefront and leading us. It is a distraction from what you engage the conversation with in the first place. How does judgment impact you? How does judgment and perceptions affect you? Do you change direction every time you hear one? Does it bring you in a state of mind where the clarity is gone because you're so engaged in what has been said that you've lost track of what it is that you might have been there for? These are all pieces that are a part of us that we need to master so that when judgment takes place, we need to have the tools to be able to mirror it back if necessary, or just with clarity, understand that that's somebody's judgment. It's not our truth. And I don't need to take it on as my truth and I don't need to react to it. What is it that you notice about yourself when it comes to judgment? How do you deal with judgment? How do you deal with perceptions? And do you give your power away? So now that we've talked about judgment, we've talked about the power of the voice, how do you deal with fear? When I define fear, I look at fear quite differently than anybody else, possibly. Maybe others look at it the way that I do. I'm not sure. But I engage and I define fear as if you were to have a circle and you were in the center of that circle, fear is the boundary of that circle. And when you're outside of that circle, you're past your comfort level. Therefore, you are in fear because you are not comfortable with what you have done outside of that circle or what is being engaged to you outside of that circle. When you're within the circle, everything's comfortable, everything's fine. Why? Because you have a comfort zone. You're in your comfort zone. You have a level by which you are used to operating. And in that operation, you know what should be taking place because nothing's ever guaranteed every day, but you know what should be taking place. You understand what your routine is. You understand that this is my world. This is my comfort zone. And this is where I can operate my daily activity and not even have to be conscious of what's taking place. And when we get into this comfort zone of where we really don't have to be present, fully present in order to operate, we're happy. We're in our place. We're in our zone. And as soon as we go beyond that limit, we are nervous, fearful. What takes place is that, oh, well, what my heart desires is taking me beyond my boundaries, and I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that because I can afford it. I don't know if I can do that because of the potentiality. I don't know if I can do that because I don't understand the full impact of what it is I want to get accomplished, and I'm not quite sure if that's going to do it. And so sometimes we move with caution. Other times we move in total fear, and we just go, you know what, I'm not going to do that. When your heart longs, to do something and you're afraid to do it and you're not honoring your heart, you're not honoring your growth. 
our circles all exist and we all have circles. It's not the fact that we have a circle and we have an operation of comfort zone. But it's the fact that if we have a vision and we hold a vision and we are afraid to expand that bubble, that circle, to encompass our vision, then what we are is stuck. And we're stuck in our own story. And our story is the engagement of the ego that says, well, I can't do that because. And it doesn't even matter what the excuse is. I won't do that because. And then fill in the blank. We all have done it. The question is, are you doing it now? How are you empowering yourself? Are you empowering and executing your right to growth? What prevents you from executing that right to growth? Notice. Notice. Where are your limited beliefs in the midst of all of this? How do you move past your limiting beliefs? How do you move past that point of saying, I can't afford it? How do you move past that point of saying, I can't achieve it? How do you move past that point of saying to yourself, well, where do I begin? How do I transition? How do I move past this part of my life that says that I'm feeling cornered or I'm feeling trapped? Or I'm feeling like I just can't move forward the way I want to. It's all within. These are the pieces that we need to master to move out of the story of feeling like we can only operate within our comfort zone. If your heart is longing for movement beyond your comfort zone and you're not honoring it you're stuck in the story the pieces that i've named the noticing the power of our voice the judgment and how to usurp judgment how to move past people's judgment how to reflect that judgment back how to redefine fear and expand our boundaries and honor our heart's desires, even if it starts with small steps. To notice when we're being triggered, to notice when we're stuck in this cycle, this story, this cycle, this pattern of not really being present within our lives, but just going through the motions of our lives because we have the shoes on and we don't have to feel what's under our feet. We don't have to think about every step that we take. It just makes it easier. These are the pieces. These are the levers by which we need to work with to empower ourselves, to change that story, to choose what aspect of my personality, my personality leads me through life, to have a clear Understanding that, okay, I've just been judged and my pattern and my noticing and understanding myself and mastering myself is so clear that I've caught that I'm about to react based on how I typically react in a pattern. And all I have to do is notice because when I notice, I can make a different decision. I can make a different decision. When I understand that I'm engaging that boundary of fear and I don't want to pass that to honor my heart's desire, I notice the fact that I'm not growing. I notice the fact that I'm kind of stuck in this story. I notice that this is my comfort zone and I don't want to usurp that comfort zone. I don't want to test that boundary. Well, how do I get past that? Well, first, you acknowledge that it's taking place. And second, 
you choose to make a different decision. And that decision may be, okay, I'm going to engage in just a little bit and then move a little bit. And I'm going to test the relationship and I'm going to test the boundary and I'm going to test the circumstance. And then I'm going to find the courageous part of me that has the capability of moving past the story of fear. And I'm going to dare to make a couple of conscious decisions that's going to take me out of my comfort zone and settle into that, expanding that boundary. You see, we create our world. And these levers are the creation of our world. And if we are in the part of the world where all we're doing is reacting every day, we don't get very far. We expend a lot of emotional energy. We expend a lot of physical energy. And we don't accomplish very much. To master self is to understand that what I bring to the table is of value. I am worthy to trust myself. I am worthy to be heard, to be seen, to be understood. And that when I choose this empowerment, that the best version of myself is going to lead me through, that understands that I am capable, I bring wisdom to the table, and that I know that what I have to offer needs to be received. So what empower, achieve, succeed, brings to the table is a mastery of understanding the levers and the tools that help us expand our thinking. To help us expand our catching the triggers, catching the patterns, confronting the fears that hold us into that limited boundary of comfort zone. To understand that our heart desires to grow past that. And to know that if I'm in the part of my personality that's insecure, not trusting, that I'm not going anywhere. But if I consciously choose the more courageous part of who I am and dare to step into my own power, that I'm going to have a different outcome. That I'm going to have a different response. You see, as we go through life and we achieve different roles, many times we allow the roles to define us. But understand this, the more that I engage in understanding who I am, the vibratory, worthy being that I am, the courageous woman that I am, the confident woman that I am, who is able to discern, make a different decision, draw from the most courageous part of myself to accomplish the things, then whatever role whatever hat, whatever label I put on, that my courageous and best version of myself shines through those roles. And then if my better and courageous self shines through those roles, how I engage in relationships change because how the people are responding to me changes. They're not seeing me as a person who doesn't go beyond the boundaries and circles around only within their comfort zone. Have you ever met a person that you wanted to connect with? You're like, 
oh my God, her personality is phenomenal. She is just something. I want to connect with her. That's not the person who's afraid to take a bit of a risk. That is not the person who is so withdrawn in because they don't want to be seen. But we're not talking about ego. We're talking about the presence by which you bring when you are in your most confident self. Think about that individual who walks into a room and all of the heads turn and they look and they see this individual and you can feel that individual from across the room. You can feel the presence of them. And that's because of the self mastery of saying, I love me. What I bring is my most confident self, my most worthy self, my most valued self. And that no matter what role I put on, I vibrate through that. I am fully present. I am discerning. I am confident and I am conscious about each and every step that I take. So what Empower Achieve Succeed does is it brings a methodology by which you are able to not only just self-reflect, but to notice and catch who you're not. To be able to navigate through a story to understand and get to the root cause by which you operate. Whether it be a trauma that took place in your early childhood. The upbringing and the limited belief systems that we all encounter as we're growing up. The judgment that took place because we never had the opportunity to be able to engage what we wanted to do because of our parental situation or whatever the case may be. Many situations take place like this. You are not alone. But the answers to resolve that do not lie external to us. In order to move past the story of self, you have to look back into self to understand what it is that needs to be released, what it is that needs to take place that moves us out of that story. So in my methodology, I've created a master class that actually takes you through each one of the tools and the methodology and the understanding of what it is that you need to address within self. And as you progress through within self, you're going to understand how and where you hold your power, how to bring it forward through whatever role that you're playing, mother, daughter, father, son, employer, employee, visionary, Whatever that might be, bring the best and most confident version of yourself and don't look outside to seek it. Master self. Understand self. Know thyself. So this is not something that is a new concept. This is something that we all possess. It's just how we choose to embrace the tools that we already possess and to bring it into use into our daily lives to fruition so that we can accomplish and go after the things that have only been a dream, have only been a vision, have only been a concept. And so I dare say to you that I would invite you to enolia.live. That's E-N-O-L-I-A dot live. Look at the work. Dare to check it out. Look at the coaching. 
I do a three month and a six month coaching. So if you don't want to take the master class at your own self pace, then I engage you for the coaching. I also hold retreats. You want to do that seven to 10 day submerge within the retreat? I invite you. But the key is here is that the self mastery is the foundation to everything. When you master self, what do you do? You build as the entrepreneur on top of self. You have to be able to trust your decisions. You have to be able to navigate through the stories that are thrown at you that are the challenges. And you have to be able to trust yourself. And you have to be able to make conscious decisions. And if you don't create a strong foundation, you're going to find yourself circling as that entrepreneur. If you don't create a strong foundation, you're going to find that as you navigate through the corporate job, you're not going anywhere. You're circling and circling and no movement is taking place and you're looked over and you're not getting that role that you want and you're not quite sure why. And everybody keeps giving you this dangling carrot. Oh, you're almost there. Oh, you just need this much more. Oh, you just need this much more. But if you look back and you reflect back and you go, well, every time I upgrade, nothing else happens except the fact that somebody tells me I need to upgrade again. The glass is always half empty. I'm never enough. When am I enough? That's when you know you need to go back down to the foundation because you've always been enough. You have always been enough. You are the gift. And until you believe that you are the gift, how would you expect anybody else to? So again, I subscribe to you. Empower, achieve, succeed through your own self-mastery. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for this time. Wow, such an amazing uh, presentation. Your presentation drew the audience in and held their attention for continuously. So I think the power of choice is a wonderful gift that we all have. And it is this gift that enables us to make choices about what we want to believe and what we don't want to believe. So those who lead successful lives have chosen to believe in the thoughts that empower them. And of course, those who live in mediocrity have chosen to believe in the thoughts that disempower them. That's exactly right. You are so right. And the whole key is to know that you are the gift. That as you step into understanding that what you hold is of value to everyone, no matter how great or how small then you've just learned to utilize the tool that you already have, which is to empower yourself, to truly empower. Yeah. So yeah, beliefs are only thoughts and they are not real. So, the, so with the power of choice, we can change our thoughts anytime we want. So that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful presentation from you. And uh, here is a question from our audience. So the question is: Are those whose position includes managing, supervising, or supporting employees adequately trained, skilled, or competent to make sound decisions? 
So can you repeat the question to make sure I understand what, what's being asked? Sure. Or those whose position includes managing, supervising, mm -hmm. or supporting employees adequately trained, skilled, or competent to make sound decisions. I believe that it's going to depend on the individual. Are they adequately chain, trained? And the question is, what is their foundation in terms of how their relationship is with people? People were going to test you. So when you make a decision, and that decision is questioned, are you able to stand in your truth and say, you know what, good, bad, or indif indifferent, this intention has or this decision has the best of intentions and it may not be a decision that's liked but it's a decision that has to be made are you able to stand in that truth and feel good about the decision that you made even though everybody may not like it when you have two employees who basically want to compete with one another how do you level the playing field do you feel confident enough to say okay listen you're competing with one another. So let's just even the playing field here. You both have to be successful. So if one's not successful and the other one is, that's a problem. If the other one's successful and the other one isn't, that's a problem. I need to see both successful. How are you going to make this work? These are the parts where we draw within our own empowerment to say, you're not going to divide and con conquer because your success is my success. So how are we going to be successful together? Because the behavior that I'm observing or the problem that you're bringing forward, let's, let's find the resolution. It doesn't help anybody when we have that. So these are the parts where, no, a lot of managers are not adequately trained. They don't know how to draw from within to show that it needs to be a win-win situation and be the representation of that win-win situation. But what we're taught to do is to divide, conquer, belittle, demean, or maybe hurt somebody's feelings and just go, oh, well, that's your problem, not my problem. How do you keep someone's dignity, motivate them, get them to achieve what it is you need them to achieve and stay in your truth? So you're right. The person who asked the question, a lot of people are not adequately trained. And I think that was an excellent question. So well answer, yes, both should be successful. It's not about one should be successful and another is not. So we so both should be successful. Thank you so much. Well answered. And thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. And yes, follow Enolia Forty in your Facebook page at the rate Enolia Forty and you can follow her in Instagram and you can follow her in LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Enolia Kuti. Thank you for this wonderful speech and thank you for being a part of this win conference as a speaker. And um, yeah, so let's go back to the other speaker. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.